Hello, my name is uh, Christopher DeLay. I'm a premier field engineer for Microsoft. I, my specialty is PKI or public key infrastructure. Um, the video here today is going to cover renewing the certificate for a root certification authority. So in, in my environment here, I basically have a two-tier PKI setup. So I have a um, theoretically like an offline root CA and I have a subordinate issuing CA. So the purpose for this video is just to cover uh, you know the steps required to go ahead and renew the uh, root CA certificate. Um, as some background on my blog, I've been working on some blogs on um, CA certificate life cycles. Um, so basically the life cycle of the CA certificates and RSA key pairs and um, some given some background information and how and why they should be managed. Um, so if you go to my blog, it's a TechNet blog. It is uh, located at http colon slash slash blogs dot technet dot com slash b slash xdot509. Um, alternatively, you could just do a internet search for xdot509 and it, you should, it should come up there. So the first um, kind of blog I wrote about um, talking about certificate life cycles just kind of gives a background information on kind of choosing how long your CA certificates are going to be valid for and kind of when they're going to be renewed with new key pairs and uh, the same key pair. So when you renew a certificate you really have two options whether to uh, renew the RSA key pair or you know renew the certificate with the same RSA key pair or uh, to create a new RSA key pair and there are reasons for um, taking either one of those actions and this blog kind of goes through and talks about um, the reason behind those different types of uh, times that you would renew with either a new or uh, same key pair. I'm also uh, currently working on a blog that kind of gives some more information about the renewal process so um, talks about some of the different options that you can go ahead and change when you're doing a CA certificate renewal. So uh, things that you can change in terms of how long the certificates are good for, the key sizes of the certificates, um, the hashing algorithm is used in the certificates, as well as some configuration things you're going to want to have in place before you go ahead and renew those CA certificates. Um, those two, the two, two videos that I'm working on is uh, one for renewing a root CA certificate, which is this one, and uh, one for renewing a subordinate CA certificate. Both, both of those videos are going to be um, posted on YouTube, and they're also going to be linked to the bottom of this blog when I get it finished, um, so they'll be accessible either way. So again, that's background material for if you're thinking about um, renewing your CA certificate or trying to understand CA life cycles. Those two blogs should give you a lot of information based on that. So I wanted to go through and talk about the process for actually doing the renewals. I was going to include it in the blog as a bunch of screenshots and steps, but I figured it might be more uh, straightforward to go ahead and do it in a video, and then you have all this information at in one spot. So in my lab, I have a, a root CA. Um, in a real production environment, you would have an offline root CA. This is not really an offline root CA. It's actually connected to the network, uh, not joined to the domain, um, it, simply just because it's a lab environment and to kind of make things easier to move back and forth. In a real production environment, your root CA would be offline. So I want to go ahead and renew that CA certificate, so let me go ahead and pull up the uh, Certification Authority MMC. If you go ahead and take a look here, you'll notice that if I go into um, the properties of the CA, I can go through and take a look and see whether this um, CA certificate has ever been uh, renewed before, or whether there's just one. So um, you see there's just one certificate listed here, so I know that this um, certificate has not been renewed at all. So that's one way to kind of go ahead and determine excuse me, um, whether the CA certificate has been renewed or not. Um, there is another way to go ahead and look if you look at the actual certificate itself and go ahead and look at the um, the CA version. It'll go ahead and give you that information as well. So we see CA version 0, 0, 0, 0.0, so it hasn't been renewed. These numbers will go ahead and increment up as things are renewed on the CA. Um, so that's another way to go ahead and tell. So I'm going to go ahead and renew this. So in order to renew that, I'm just going to go ahead and go to all tasks, renew CA certificate. It's going to prompt me to stop the uh, CA service, which I'm going to go ahead and do. Next, it's going to basically ask me whether I want to renew with a new key pair or the same key pair. 
If I select yes here, it's going to renew with a new key pair. Uh, if I click new, no, it's going to renew with the same key pair. Either way, a new certificate is going to be generated. Um, if I do renew with a new key pair, then there's also going to be an additional curl because each um, CA, each RSA key is going to have to sign its own curl. So those are some of the implica implications for doing the different types of renewals. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK here. And that's going to go through and actually renew the certificate. There's not really any other action to take because the root CA is the signer of its own certificate. So there's no files to copy to another CA or any additional work that needs to be done. Just go ahead and do that um, renewal. And it's going to go ahead and generate, in this case, a new certificate with a new key pair. So if I go ahead and look, we can take and see that there's actually um, two certificates listed here. We have certificate number zero, which was the original uh, root CA certificate, and then we have certificate number one, which is the uh, renewed CA certificate. So we have a list of two certificates. If we look at the latest certificate and look at the actual CA version on this, we'll see that it's 1.1, .1, which is an indication that it's been renewed with a new key pair. So I've gone through, I've successfully renewed my CA certificate. So I'm not completely done. I'm just going to cover some additional steps for um, that you're probably going to have to do in your environment. So um, there are two locations um, that are going to be stamped in my issuing CA certificate. So for example, if you look at my um, existing uh, issuing CA uh, certificate, we'll just go ahead and open the... Uh, Certification Authority Console here on my subordinate issuing CA and it will go ahead and give us a list of uh, what certificates I have available and kind of the same thing whether it's been renewed or not. So we see it's not been renewed so if we go ahead and click on view certificate it's going to actually go ahead and bring up the actual issuing CA certificate itself so we can go ahead and look at some additional information that's on that file. So what I'm specifically talking about is um, in this certificate there is a authority information access. So this is, these are locations where I can actually download the root CA certificate. Um, one is LDAP, so my Active Directory. The other one is a website. Um, the website's actually hosted on my issuing CA, which again is not a best practice. Um, really, that should be separated from the CA itself. But again, because this is a simple demo environment on a laptop to keep it small, I only have a couple of machines. Um, so these, so, um, so the AIA locations are where I'm going to want to put the new root CA certificate, and then I'm also going to want to put the CRIL in the uh, CDP locations here, which is again Active Directory and uh, the website that's hosted on my CA. The other thing that's important in publishing the root CA certificate to AD is when it's published to AD, um, the auto-enrollment client runs on computers and that's how that new root CA certificate becomes trusted by clients. So publishing it to AD is absolutely important. In fact, if you go ahead and take a look at my containers here, you'll see I have my current root published to the AIA and CDP container. Uh, so the root CA certificate is published to the AIA container and the certification authorities container. It did not like that at all. Okay, so here it is. It's in my certification authorities container, AIA container, and my curls in the CDP container. So basically, I want to go through and publish the root CA certificate to AD, put the certificate on the website, publish the curl to AD, um, put the curl on the website. So I'm just going to go ahead and go back to my root CA. I'm going to go ahead and pull the files from the local uh, file system. So C Windows. System 32, cert serve, cert enroll. I have a list of files here. This is the uh, original root CA certificate. This is the renewed CA certificate. These are cross certs between the old and new. Um, this is the old 
Um, this is the krill signed by the original RSA key pair, and here's the krill signed by the new RSA key pair. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the krill file, and I'm going to go ahead and grab the uh, renewed CA certificate here. I'm going to go ahead and copy those. Um, in a real production environment, you kind of have to sneaker those, sneaker net those off, uh, because mine's connected to a network, which it shouldn't, shouldn't be. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that over SMB. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that um, to the desktop for now. And that was not what I wanted to do. Let's go back to my DC and uh, let's go to the desktop on my DC. So I'm going to go ahead and paste those in there. Go over to my DC now. So I want to go ahead and publish these Active Directory. So I'm just going to open up an elevated command prompt. Right click, run as administrator. Uh, CD into my desktop here. Uh, sort util dash ds publish and I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, root cert. And apparently I can't spell very well. Okay, so that's been added. Um, we should actually go ahead and see that show up in Active Directory. So let me go ahead and uh, Relaunch PKI view here. Go ahead and give that a, a second to go ahead and do its thing. Um, PKI view is normally used for troubleshooting like AIA and CDP locations, but also does have that nice view in Active Directory that lets us see what's going on in the AD containers. So I'm just going to go ahead and switch out to the AIA container. Now I published the CA certificate to Active Directory with that DS publish command. So that should go ahead and publish it in both the um, both in the uh, AIA container and uh, also in the certification authorities container. So it's taking a little bit of time. Um, one because it, one because it's a virtual environment on a laptop. Two is probably trying to do validation of these certificates as it pulls it up. So we see here that it says that the Contoso root, so that's the new one that I just published, is untrusted. And so it's going to give us pretty much the same view once we get into the certification authorities container. So the reason it's, it's untrusted at this point is I published the Active Directory, but what actually brings that certificate down and makes it trusted on the local machine is um, auto enrollment. So next time auto enrollment runs it'll be trusted. I can kind of speed things up and show you what that would look like. So if I go ahead and just uh, bring up uh, elevated command prompt. And I'm just going to run a command cert util or cert util, whatever you want to call it, dash pulse. And that's going to go ahead and trigger the uh, auto enrollment client to run. As the auto enrollment client runs, one of the things it's going to go ahead and do is pull those enterprise uh, certificates like trusted routes down and put them in the local stores. So now if I go ahead and go back into manage AD containers and go like into my AIA container, we see that everything's trusted. I have my original route, I have my renewed route certificate. I have that in the AIA container and the certification authorities container as well. So the next step I'm going to go ahead and do is go ahead and publish the root to AD, I mean the uh, root curl to Active Directory. So I'm just going to, again, just command prompt, cert util, um, dash ds publish, and the name of the curl, and then just hit enter. And so that goes ahead and publishes Active Directory. Just a note, you'll need to be Enterprise Administrator to do this publishing. So just kind of make sure you have your permissions set, you're in the right accounts and everything before you go ahead and do this. Um, so if we go back to Enterprise PKI or PKI view, we can go ahead and take a look at the uh, CDP container. And we see now we have two base curls. So we're all good there. We have everything published to AD. Um, I do have my AIA and CDP locations hosted on a website on the actual 
issuing CA, so um, what I'm going to go ahead and need to do is just go ahead and copy these two files over to that. So I'm um, just going to, I don't have SMB access from the DC to the CA, so I'm just going to go from the CA and pull them. So I'm just going to go back over to my DC, go into the desktop there, copy these two files, and then I'm just going to bring them to that uh, folder that's associated with the uh, a website on my machine. So I'm just going to go bring this in the C Windows um, system 32, search, serve, certain role, and go ahead and paste those in there. Cool, so now I have everything set. I've gone ahead and renewed my CA certificate. I've, take, I've taken the uh, CA certificate, renewed CA certificate, posted it in the AIA locations, published it to Active Directory. Um, since I did renew with a new key pair, I had a new Krill. I took that and published that to my CDP locations, which were Active Directory and the website. So this video goes ahead and covers everything you need to do pretty much um, for the enrollment. If your AIA locations are on a separate website, then or a load balance website where you have multiple web servers and obviously there's a little uh, more additional work that you need to do. Um, if you have an HSM, there may be some additional steps as well. Um, in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and cover renewing an issuing CA certificate. There are uh, some more steps involved in that, um, but that's it for this time and uh, thank you for watching.